Hello dear children, welcome back to the class. Today we are going to learn about the chapter number 17, Introduction to Biotechnology. The objective of the lesson are animal tissue and plant tissue. In this we are going to learn about the different types of animal tissues and different types of plant tissues. Tissue culture technique. The concept of agree tourism and the concept of agree business. These all are the objective of the lesson. Let's begin the first one that is animal tissue. We know that tissue is a group of cells. And the cell is nothing but the structural and functional unit of life. Life begins from cell. So, a group of cell is said to be that tissue and a group of tissue is said to be the organ. A group of organ is said to be the system, just like the respiratory system, digestive system, nervous system, circulatory system, muscular system. So the children, a group of organ is said to be the system and a group of system is said to be the body or organism. Tissue is further classified into two categories. First one is simple tissue and second one is complex tissue. So the children, what do you mean by simple tissue and complex tissue? Simple tissue is nothing but the tissue which made from only one type of cell is said to be a simple tissue and complex tissue is a tissue which is made from more than one type of cell is said to be the complex tissue. The example of simple tissue is that epithelial tissue of animals and meristematic tissue of plant both are the example of simple tissue and complex tissue the blood cell of animals complex tissue xylem and phloem of plant is said to be the complex tissue all right in short the tissues are categorized into two types simple tissue and complex tissue plants being sedentary what do you mean by sedentary means plant cannot move from one place to other place fixed to a single place that's why it is said to be the sedentary dear children why the animals are moving from one place to other place yeah to find out the food material which is necessary for the survival plants cannot move from one place to other place how the plant will get the food material of course there is no doubt plant is able to synthesize their own food material with the help of photosynthesis that's why plant is said to be the autotrophs all right in plant body the number of dead cells are present and in animal body less dead cells are present in short we can say that plant needs less energy for their work for the process of photosynthesis for the process of transpiration plant needs the energy but due to the presence of less living cells and more dead cells in plant body plant need less energy why animal need more energy because of the presence of more living cells and less dead cells so this is the comparison between the plant cell and animal cell 
Dear children, animal tissue further classified into four different types. First one is epithelial tissue. Second one is connective tissue. Third one is muscular tissue. And fourth one is nervous tissue. Epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue and nervous tissue. So animal tissue is further classified into four different types. Let's begin the first one, epithelial tissue. So what do you mean by epithelial tissue? Epithelial tissues are considered to be the protective tissues because they are responsible for the protection of inner content of the cell. Protective tissue or epithelial tissue in the animal body are said to be the epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissues are closely packed and form a continuous layers. As the material enters in the body, first encounters the epithelial tissues. Epithelial tissues are separated from the other cells or tissues by a fibrous membrane. Epithelial tissues are found in the inner surface of the blood vessel, walls of the alveoli, mucous layer of the mouth cavity and the skin. Epithelial tissues are further classified into six different types. Let's see. Number one, squamous epithelium. Squamous epithelium is found in the inner surface of the mouth, esophagus, blood vessels and alveoli. Squamous epithelium is thin, small, flat cells form semi-permeable membrane. The main function of squamous epithelium is the selective transport of substances. Second type of epithelial tissue is stratified epithelium. Stratified epithelium is found in the outer layer of the skin. Its structure is mainly a layer of many layers of cells. The main function of stratified epithelium is the prevention of wearing of organs or protection of organs. Third type is glandular epithelium. It is found in the inner surface or inner layer of the skin. Cells contain vessels packed with secretory material. Secretion of the sweat oil and mucus is the main function of glandular epithelium. Fourth one is columnar epithelium. Columnar epithelium found in the inner surface of intestine and alimentary canal. Columnar epithelium is look like the columns, tall cells, upper free surface, bears the folds middle of the columnar epithelium which is responsible for the absorption. The main function of columnar epithelium is the secretion of digestive juice and absorption of nutrients. Fifth one is ciliated epithelium found in the inner surface of the respiratory tract. Upper free surface of the cell bears minute hair-like processes or structure. The main function of the ciliated epithelium is to push the mucus and air forward to keep the air passage free. And last one is tuboidal epithelium found in the tubules of kidney or nephrons as well as the salivary gland. Cells of this Cuboidal epithelium are cuboidal in shape. The main function of the cuboidal epithelium is the reabsorption of useful materials from urine and the secretion of the saliva. This is all about the epithelial tissues and its types. I hope so. It's clear. Let's see 
the next peptide that is connective tissue. What do you mean by connective tissue? Connective tissue is a tissue which is responsible to connect the different parts of the body. That's why it is said to be the connective tissue. Connective tissues are loosely arranged with a ground substances in the free space. There are different types of connective tissue. Let's begin with the first one that is blood. Blood is considered to be the connective tissue which is present in the closed circulatory system. And the question may be in your mind why the blood is said to be the connective tissue. Dear children, blood contains different types of cells just like red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets. A group of cell is said to be the tissue. That's why the blood is considered to be the connective tissue which connects the different parts of the body together. The structure of the blood cell is erythrocytes, leukocytes, platelets in a liquid plasma. And we know that the function of the blood is the transportation of oxygen, nutrients and hormones. Second type of connective tissue is lymph. Lymph is present all around the cell in the body. The structure of the lymph is fluid oozed out of the blood capillaries contains the leukocytes and the liquid ground substances. The main function of lymph is the protection of the body from infection. Third type is areolar tissue which is present between the skin and mucus as well as around the blood vessel. Different types of cells of areolar loosely arranged and supported by a jelly-like ground substance and elastic fibers. The main function of areolar tissue is to give support to the internal organs. Next type is adipose tissue which is present below the skin and around the internal organs. Cells of the adipose tissue filled with fat droplets, jelly-like ground substances. The main function of adipose tissue is the insulation, supply of energy and the storage of fats. Let's see the cartilage which is present in the nose, ear, larynx and trachea. Cells of the cartilage supported by a fibrous, flexible, jelly-like ground substance. The main function of cartilage is the lubricates the surface of bones, give support and shift to organs. Next type is bones, which is present in the skeleton system. The main function of bone is to give supports and protections of different organs, which is also responsible to help in the movements. And last type is the tendons and ligaments, which are present at the joints. Tendons, fibers, strong and less elastic. If you want to see the ligament, the ligament is strong and highly flexible. Tendons, main function is to join the muscles to the bone, and the main function of the ligament is the is to join two bones to each other. This is all about the connective tissue. Third type of animal tissue is muscular tissue. Dear children, muscular fibers or muscular tissues are formed from a special type of contractile proteins due to which the contraction and the relaxation is possible. Muscular tissues are made from long muscle cells or fibers. Muscular movements occur only due to the contraction and relaxation. There are three types of muscular tissue. First one is striated muscle, second one is a non striated muscle and third one is cardiac muscle. Let's see one by one. 
स्पीटेड मसल सेल्स आर लॉन्ग सिलेंड्रिकल एंड मल्टीन्यूक्लेटेड देयर इज नो ब्रांचेस इन द स्पीटेड मसल्स नॉन स्पीटेड मसल्स आर शॉर्ट स्पिंडल शेप्ड एंड यूनिन्यूक्लेटेड देयर इज नो सब ब्रांचेस कार्डियक मसल्स आर सिलेंड्रिकल एंड यूनिन्यूक्लेटेड एज वेल एज ब्रांच If you see the structure of the non-striated, striated, and cardiac muscles, in striated muscles, alternate dark and light bands are present or attached to the bones. That's why the striated muscle is said to be the skeletal muscles. Skeletal muscles can move as per our will. That's why it is also said to be the voluntary muscles. non striated muscles dark and light bands are absent which is not attached to the bones which not work according to our wills that's why it is said to be the involuntary muscles which are present in the alimentary canal and the blood vessels and last type is the cardiac muscles which is very special muscle in this the dark and light bands are present the heart is made from the cardiac muscles and movement of the heart are not under our control or our wills they contract and relax rhythmically this is all about the different types of muscles i hope so it clear in your mind fourth type of enable tissue is nervous tissue nervous tissue is also said to be the neurons before also we studied the structure of the neuron the branch the structure is coming from the cell body which is said to be the dendrites cell body at the center nucleus is present as well as cytoplasm a long unbranched structure coming from the cell body is said to be the exon and exon ends with exon terminus in short we can say that the neuron is made from three main part that is dendrites cell body and exon so what is the function of dendrites dendrites are responsible to collect the information from different part of the body as well as to the surrounding the main function of the cell body is to transfer the electric impulses or information from dendrites to the exon exon will collect the electrical impulses from the cell body and send to the exon terminus in this way the electric impulses or information generated or conducted by the neuron the main function of the neuron is to generate the electric impulses as well as to conduct or carry out the electric impulses from one neuron to the another neuron dear children there is a gap between two neurons neurons are not directly connected with each other there is a gap between them this gap is said to be the synapse synapse is filled with a neurotransmitters neurotransmitters are the chemical substances which are responsible to carry the electric impulses from one neuron to the next neuron this is all about the structure and the function of the nervous tissue